Hello, welcome to another tutorial, this video will be a continuation of my first one, the building basics video. Keep in mind advanced in the title of this video does not mean you are gonna be a pro at building. Just yet at least, but I wanted to teach a few important things, to understand this video you will want to watch my first video, and also the keybinds video if you want to know what I'm pressing. I want to firstly state the two different types of building. The first one being environmental art, which is a skill set in which you make environments by placing down assets or designing interiors and or exteriors. As opposed to the other, which would be CSG modeling, making assets with Roblox parts. Personally on my channel I am covering both topics, for instance my other environmental art video, this video will be covering the asset creation side. The first step we want to take is looking for a good reference, we will be using Pinterest again. We will be making a fantasy style bridge this episode, it is very important to keep in mind that your reference is not always a final product. And your result may change drastically. But that's okay, it's your version now. You made it. You will want to look through multiple different keywords to make sure you have a suitable reference for your work. For instance I am changing it to curved or arched. This helps me find a more suited bridge to build. I like this one, do you? Too bad. You just want to save it and import it into Roblox Studio. There is an active tutorial on my channel on how to do that. We've imported our image, now let's make a small spot for our bridge, just make a small chasm using the fill tool, this is entirely optional. We will be using terrain as a start and end point, let's cross this river. I am also using the same PBR pack from my stylized environment video, you can download it in the discord below. Let me color it, I'm showing you this so you can use the same color if you like it. The water is a little opaque, let's fix that. Having zero reflectivity will only allow for texture to be gained by waves and water movement. Reflective properties in water changes how much your water reflects your skybox. Let's create a part that goes along to measure our gap. For this build we will be covering modularity, meaning making modular assets. Which are assets which can be changed in shape without resizing everything, or placed in concession to create structures like segments of houses, assets, or even in this case, bridges. You should always want to place down a rig when building, or anything with 6x4 stud dimensions for rig sizing. Our bridge will have two segments, start and middle, this is our basis as we can duplicate middle segments to make it longer or shorter to fit needs. Here this is just a concept of how modular assets work, but we can duplicate these over to create segments, try and imagine each segment as a bridge arch let's work on it. I'm just resizing the terrain for this tutorial, however I get that resizing terrain in a large form isn't feasible in larger maps. We can now resize the parts to fit our terrain. This block here will serve as our main segment, the beginning segments. We can make our first arch point from here. A lot of tutorials, or even just using common sense you would try and use Archimedes plugin to make a rounded edge. However there is a much, much easier technique we can apply here. We can use wedges to get a low poly rounded arch, keep in mind you can increase the rounded edge by adding more wedges, however it's not very optimal. As a few issues arise when we do this, if we have a lot of wedges or intersecting parts, we get what is called zindex fighting. Or it's fighting, in which two or more parts are fighting for zindex priority over which texture or color is at the foreground. We can fix this by adding a slight 0.0001 offset to one of the parts, which is why I recommend not using too many wedges to make it less noticeable. And just like that, we have successfully created a simple archway. It's much easier when you do it like this, isn't it? You can see it's kind of sharp at the top. We can fix this by having a small flat area at the top, keep in mind the distance will be doubled when symmetrical. There we go. We have our first part completed. And it only took four parts each. Now that we've completed our block out essentially, we can start to move on to minor details. For this I am just adding depth to the sides of the bridge, this allows for a more defined look. You can use wedges to fuse sharp corners easier. 
This is well known but really overlooked sometimes. I'm gonna add short walls on the side of my bridge so that people don't drown. For safety concerns you should too. We can use more wedges to flush out sharp edges. This is a common trend. While editing I'm realizing this wall is a bit thin. Feel free to make yours thicker. For the inner wedge, you can have it short or reach the very top of the wall. Here we've essentially finished our first segment, we just want to duplicate our wall over. There. Aren't you proud of yourself? Well I am proud of you, not many people actually stick to building. We want to add a blocker at the end so it doesn't look so unnatural and just abruptly stop. You can put ornamental details on here, or even statues. Go wild. You want to do what you can to make it flush with the terrain but sometimes there's really no winning. You can do what you can to make it fit. We can select our segment and duplicate it over, leaving out the parts primary to the end segment, like the blocks at the end and the wedge connecting it to the terrain. Here we are officially working on the middle segments. We'll want to cut this middle part in half so that it doesn't become too large. I'm gonna add little lookout spots on the connections of the bridge like in my reference, however I will not be making huge towers. Instead of making it circular, I will also be going with a wedged extrusion here as they are low poly and easy to manage. There's nothing I can really add here to talk about so let me speed it up. We wanna add more parts on the edge like the rest of the bridge, this part might be tricky. If you used wedges you can easily align them to the edges, which is why I use them for convenience. This might be the most technically difficult part but you want to add the inner wedge here. As you can see there is now an obtuse angle which makes it very difficult to fill in that gap. We will deal with it after, and you might think to duplicate it over, but because it's not a 45 degree angle we sadly can't. Don't worry about the gap here, we can use gap fill to fill this in after. Gap fill does exactly what it sounds like, it connects two points. Here's the really tricky part. Here we have our obtuse angle, and it's not really possible to connect these corner gaps. To fix this we simply want to pull out each edge to pass through the other. And then we can have a part go on top of it, and cut through the extruded part of the wedge, if your parts don't snap to the wedge like mine make sure you have aligned surfaces on when right clicking parts. I've already done it but make sure your two parts are negated and ready to be unioned. I'm duplicating this over to the other side. We will need to recalibrate and scale the parts again but ensure you have that dedication. Here we just want to redo the corner parts we did. Let's first duplicate it over so we actually have something to cut from. Once you know what to do it's pretty easy. I hope you find these videos enjoyable, if you made it this far comment bones. To union these you simply need to press the wedges they are on. And the red negation parts. How it works is that the negation cuts from whatever else you have selected. Easy to understand that part right. I'll do it one more time but I'll skip the other two. If the parts behind it overlap and push outwards, just scale them back in, not a problem. Perfect, now let's move on. Here we've got our segment fully complete, let's have a look at it connected.
My terrain doesn't fit, whoopsies. Much better. As you can see everything is made with simple and easy segments, this is key modularity and can be used in multiple use cases, like making houses or asset packs, modularity means similar models with slightly differing aspects to make unique variations. Like procedural generation. Let's move on to detailing. I'm gonna be adding a support blocker at the bottom of the arches, to do this I'm just gonna be using the beams on the side. This gives us depth and detail on our arches, making it feel strong, obviously these bridges don't actually undergo stress or physics. I am going to go ahead and make a road-like bump in the middle, this makes the surface of the bridge feel more realistic. This process is super simple as we are just adding three more parts. As you can see I've gone ahead and added some textures. If you want to know how to add textures like these, or how to import them go watch my other video on importing PBR textures. What I'm doing here is I'm actually selecting different texture groups. And allocating a specific color, when making assets like this it's a process where we segment parts out into different colors for what texture they will have. It's important to name them too, so you can refer to them by searching to quickly edit the colors. And look, I accidentally clicked off. But that's okay, because I named the parts, so I can quickly just select them again. I mentioned it earlier, but here's an example of Zindex fighting. Here we can just fix it by not having any parts within another. I've skipped past texturing the other bridge part. Let's move on to the red section, you'll want to name each color corresponding to their texture. It's easiest to do the ones with the least amount of parts first, because if you name them, you can just select the entire thing afterwards and click on the parts you don't want to texture. We've got everything here bricked up, with bricks. It's bricked. And you can see there are instances of Zindex fighting like I mentioned before. Now you can fix the by giving an offset to the part. Oh, or you can union it however this arises its own issues. As the topology is pretty bad, however for this video I don't really care all that much and just leave it as is. I'm now gonna show you what I meant by selecting everything to get the red parts. Because you could do it by hand. Or you can do this method and filter out the name parts in Explorer and selecting all the ones relative. This might be easier if you group the bridge segments. See? We've easily selected all the red parts. Don't be like me but I forget to name them. And also remember that there are unions here, so you'll need to search union as well as part. And turn on use part color in properties. And once we've done this, we've effectively colored our bridge. We can now go ahead and group it by selecting it and pressing Ctrl plus G. And now, it's time to arrange things. Done, keep in mind this definitely is not the only way to do this. This is just my example. Feel free to take your own approach on structures like this. And now we've officially finished our bridge. Let's take a look at some functionality. Firstly, we can literally just cut a piece out if we want to make a broken bridge, it's that simple. Because we followed a healthy workflow. Or we can make a smaller bridge, change the size, everything. It is all up to you now. I wanted to quickly go over a topic I'll call baking. Not to be confused with actual 3D model baking, however the term here is that we are turning this modular bridge into one large asset, making each segment the whole bridge. There are positives to doing this. It doesn't look like much here but we are changing it from 9 parts on the top for the middle road, to 3. We are reducing part count and increasing performance at the cost of the asset being fully customizable. We can see here purely how different the model varies in wireframe. Now that we are pretty much done, let's make sure everything is anchored and test out our bridge. Wow, this bridge is so bridgy. If you enjoyed this and learned something, please subscribe and share to somebody who needs to learn how to cross a river. Thank you, goodbye.